Aries, sun, moon, and rising sun, welcome to the month of May 2024. It is a lucky month, especially in your money, finance, and resources and possessions part of your sky. You're going to have some super love from Venus, Jupiter, Uranus. It's going to be one of your better financial months, but you are also driven, focused, passionate, decisive, and a super powered action taker as well in the month of May. We're going to have a relief from the intensity of those Aries eclipses that we've been going through since last spring, and now you're going to move into a time of greater ease. If you're new to my channel, welcome. My name is Lori Lothian, and I am using the Western Tropical Zodiac and the whole sign house system. Love those fixed stars and minor asteroids, and I cover them in all of my videos, 30 videos or more every month with all signs features. Please think about checking it out by subscribing and liking and hitting that notification bell. And my only promotion I'm sharing with you in the month of Merry Month of May is my Month Madness giveaway. And you want to win a reading with me, a free course, free recourse replays, my 2024 all sign video Bundle valued at $77 is only available off the public eye. It's private, deep, deep dive content. I'm giving away a shit ton of stuff. So if that interests you, please join my Cosmic Moonshine newsletter where those giveaway contests will be up and running once a week through the entire week of May. All you have to do is sign up and be a subscriber to be entered to win. In the description box below is a link to my newsletter right? Comes out every Saturday, written content, not by AI, but by me. All right. So let's talk about this guy and let's light up, light up the story for you. Now, when I talked about this being a very positive and lucky month, it's a lot to do with what Venus is up to in the sky this month. See, Venus is the goddess of, of, of love and money and beauty and harmony and peace. And she's going to do a little segue into the sign of Taurus where she will benefit you greatly. Okay. So let's talk about that planetary ingress before we dive into the minutia of the, you know, day by day content for the month ahead. Venus will move uh, out of the sign, okay, where she was sitting uh, out of the sign of uh, Aries, where she was in her detriment for three weeks. But on April the 29th, as we step into this new month, she's now going to be moving through the sign of her home kingdom, Taurus. And that happens to be your second house, where you have your resources, your finances, your possessions, and your face. Often when she comes through this part of the chart, people get their teeth cleaned or veneers or a new cosmetic look or facial features improving, you know, even, even just, you know, just a regular teeth cleaning, but it's like to beautify the face. But the second house is also the place of the money and the earnings and the resources that are coming in. So all through the month of May, April the 20, sorry, April the 29th through to May the 23rd, Venus is loving up your second house. Now she does this every year. And so we are going, well, more money this time, big deal. But no, it is a big deal because Jupiter and Uranus are also here. And in fact, on April the 21st, we had that important Jupiter-Uranus conjunction setting a, a, into motion a 14-year cycle of prosperity for all Aries coming up. Now I say, listen for sun, moon, and rising because the sun can be your career and purpose. The moon can be your home and body, but the rising sign will be all about everything in your life. So, but nonetheless, each of the rising sun, moon, or rising Aries will still experience some degree of extraordinary prosperity over the next 14 years, but also this month. So you want to look at the thir first three weeks of May until May 23rd as opportunity knocking for your finances. Look forward to it, grab it while it's hot. Wow. Now, the other thing I want to mention is Mars. You're ruled by Mars. He's the Lord of your sign and he's important to you. And every two years he moves through the sign of Aries. That's his home kingdom, which is about your sun or your moon, right? Or your rising sign. Now, when he's in his home kingdom, he's super strong, super powerful, super focused, super heroic, masculine, super ambitious champion warrior hero, warrior hero S heroine. Don't take your pick of, you know, sex. It doesn't matter. It's the archetype of the masculine. And this gives you an extra edge. And he'll be here from April the 30th when he enters into his home kingdom of Aries all the way through to June the 9th. So May is game on. This makes you kind of like decisive because Mars separates, you take this or you take that, right? The wheat from the chaff. It makes you action taking. Uh, it makes you aggressive. It makes you freaking passion and focus on what your ambitions you wish to achieve. So you can harness that energy. You might find sometimes it's a little bit much and you might have some rashes, some inflammation, 
you know, watch out for burns and cuts and things that he could do to the body, especially the moon and the ascendant. But for the most part, you're enjoying this. He's the Lord of your sign and he's loving you up during that time of the month of May through to June the 9th. Lord Jupiter in the sign of Taurus, where he has been sitting since last May, is moving out of Taurus at the end of this month, around the 25th, 26th of the month, depending on your time zone. And as he moves out of Taurus, which is your earnings house, where he has planted golden eggs of prosperity since last year, and even more so after December 31st, when he got clear of retrogradation and the North Node, you have been like having Santa Claus try to create more financial and prosperity opportunities for you. Now, some of those are seeds, like eggs that still have to hatch. I have seen this over and over again. It was like, nothing happened when Jupiter was in my second house. No, it's like he's planting the seeds that will then sprout as he moves into your third house and onward. So now when Jupiter moves into the next sign over, which is Gemini, that will be for one year until in fact, um, June the 10th of 2025, your third house. And this could expand your opportunities for travel, for skills-based teaching and learning, for um, uh, writing opportunities, for things to do with an expansion of your neighborhood, neighbors, an expansive positive connection to siblings, aunts, uncles, cousins, nieces, and nephews, an expansion of your of your your life in your daily life, you know, like it's bigger than life, larger than life in some way. And, um, you know, it's kind of like everything you do on the everyday day, right? It's somehow Jupiterian. So it's lucky, it's bigger, and it's expanding. But know that that shift is on the way this month. And it will be exciting because we'll have some collaboration with Venus and Jupiter that's pretty cool around the 23rd of the month. And we'll be talking about that in the breakdown. Now, also, Mercury, the messenger of the gods, Back in the month of March, began a journey through Aries. And because of retrogradation, he's not leaving until May the 15th. Now, that's a lot of time for Mercury to spend in the sign of Aries. And that's your sign. So you may have been changing your mind, going back and forth. I have an Aries sun and moon. And I was supposed to teach my Sky Reader course in the spring. But because of an unplanned trip to Portugal, I won't be able to do that. But I changed my mind about something. So you want changing your mind, changing your ideas, changing your thoughts about certain things has been happening during this this retrograde in particular, April the 1st to the 23rd. But as Mercury is now in direct motion going forward in the month of May, these kinds of wiffle waffles are gone. And now you're looking straight ahead without any snafus or glitches at what things you need to say, communicate, ideate, and set into motion. And with Mars and Mercury together here, it's a very powerful combination during the month of May. Now, Mercury will leave the sign of Aries and he's not gonna stay there past May 15th. So use those first two weeks of May to set things into motion that have to do with contracts, agreements, documents, um, things that may have to do with uh, decisions and um, ideas that you wish to execute or solidify and take Mars action on. When Mercury moves out of the sign of Aries into Taurus, he's going to join the party there. Who's there? Everybody. The sun, you know, Jupiter, Uranus, Venus, and then in comes Mercury. Like, well, Venus follows him, but Mercury enters into the sign Mercury moves into the sign of Taurus on May 15th, and Venus is there until May 23rd. So between May 15th and May 23rd, Mercury and Venus are in the same place, your money house. What a beautiful window of time. Just know that even having Mercury in your money house alone is extremely positive for financial matters, especially regarding contracts, agreements, negotiations, marketing, selling, and buying and communicating. And Mercury will be in that second house of your earnings from May 15th to June the 3rd. But what's really luscious is the Venus overlay, Venus there, until May 23rd, a sweet spot. Keep your notes handy, May 15th to May 23rd with both Venus and Mercury in your earnings house with Jupiter and Uranus. <laughs> it's exciting. And it's a really amazing pile up of prosperity. I should call this video a pile up of prosperity. <laughs> Not that it matters because, you know, I can get 23 people on the Libra last video watching the video last month and I'll get 5,000 Aries. You know, you guys are the least likely 
I've got tons of data to actually watch these videos each month. The sign that never watches for the advice of an astrologer, bar none, is the Aries folk. And I keep putting the content out for you. Go look at all the numbers on the videos every month for these things. And you'll see, like, am I kidding? Like 15,000 for Pisces, 23,000 people for Libra last month. And you guys are like, I don't know, 6,000. It's weird. I'm an Aries moon and sun, and I always listen to astrology, but I also have an Aquarius rising. Now we're going to break down the month bit by bit in terms of chronological order. And we're going to go through uh, what I think are the most important features. We're not doing the full moon, new moon, because I do whole long, long, long videos on that every month. And why you just sign up and subscribe or check out my videos for that content every month. It's too deep divey with saving symbols and asteroids and stars to cover it here. On May the 1st to the 4th, get your pen and paper. We have a lot going on. We have a Pluto square Venus. Number one, that just means that Venus and Pluto are having a very heavy conversation. I wouldn't necessarily say it's bad. It's still the greater, lesser benefic Venus. But Pluto in the house of friends, groups of belonging, allies, and elder sibling squaring Venus Okay, in your second house of earnings. It could be a money dispute with a sibling or a friend. It could be a... Um, a social event and a dispute uh, about something to do with that event. It could be some difficulty regarding a career gain and maybe uh, some money you want to come take in, like somebody saying, no, I don't want to pay the bill or something. Um, a clawback is what we call it in the online world, but something like that money and larger groups of belonging and a clash is going on here. It could be, again, just with a friend or somebody you consider one of your friends. May the 2nd to 4th, overlapping with all of this, though, Mars is flowing to Pluto, telling us a very different story. Mars in the first house of you flowing to Pluto. Divine power and personal willpower are merged. You are on your game. Asteroid Ops is up there with Pluto. You're finding you're having some golden action decision-making points around opportunities that can benefit your greater financial gain from your career around May the 2nd to the 4th. Now, on May the 12th to the 14th, the Sun and Uranus do their yearly conjunction, this time in Taurus, as it has been since 2018. And this is a surprise in your money house or a little bit of a light lightning bolt moment, even an insight around finances, resources, money, and possessions, or even spending. But at the same time, this lightning bolt acts up around May 12th to the 14th. We see Venus in a beautiful conversation of harmony and ease with Saturn in the house of revenue generated from foreign countries, foreign shores, foreign lands, and foreign people. If it's not that, you're putting a gracious stop to some addiction, self-undoing, bad habit, and pattern with a great illumination aha moment, May 12th to the 14th. On May 17th to the 22nd, oh my goodness, it's the rebirth of Jupiter in the heart of the sun. This is happening to, uh, together, they come together here only once every 12 years. You have to go back 12 years ago to see how this is, had played out. Jupiter and the sun are setting in motion one year, a 12-month cycle starting on May 17th of some kind of blessed success in your second house of earnings and money and resources. So this is going to benefit you financially and your savings and everything like that over the course of a year. It's a once every 12-year financial glow up. I think the last time this happened to me, I actually bought a stock that took off and did really well and went ka-ching, ka-ching. And I was so surprised. I was like, oh my God, that was an amazing find. If I remember correctly, 2012, this is what happened for me as an Aries sun and moon. Now, um, I'm going to do a deep dive video into this and looking at all these cycles in much more depth. So again, subscribe because there's stars and asteroids I can't share about here. I don't have time. Um, then May the 22nd. Okay. So we're jumping. No, no, May the 18th. Uh, so 17th, Jupiter and the sun are joining in Taurus, but literally a day later. So it's all happening at once. Venus is conjuncting with Uranus. Now that did not happen 12 years ago because Uranus was not in your second house for money stories. Happy money surprises. Ka-ching. Something really good is trying to happen. It's like so amazing. I don't know what it is, guys. The sun is the ruler of your house of lottery wins. Maybe some of you could win the lottery, but there's this big, beautiful surprise around money issues as well happening around May the 17th and the 18th. On May the 22nd, 
the sun is in a flowing relationship to Neptune. Dreams come true, financial dreams come true. Dreams come true around foreign places and lands. Dreams come true around the cessation of self-sabotaging patterns, addictions, and habits. Some ease, flow, grace, and almost spiritual illumination going on for you around May the 22nd. On May the 23rd, a lot is happening. At the 29th degree of Taurus, Jupiter and Venus will join together. That is called a conjunction. And in India, it is a planetary war. In modern astrology, it's one the fairy godmother and fairy godfather join forces. Good luck upon good luck. Is it going to be lucky? I don't know. Let's, con let's converse about it later. I think astrology is an empirical science. You tell me. So because they're coming together at a powerful 29 degrees of your earnings house and money house, it's a big fullness, a completion, a, a heat, reaching a mountaintop of some success in your finances. The best way I can describe it is like that, with support from Neptune and Saturn in your 12th house, indicating some karmic kickback, some karmic past life treasure chests return to you, or some extraordinary financial prosperity luck is coming your way. And there's also going to be opportunities where this is happening to engage in very big luck stories regarding rental properties or leases as well. Just know that. Yeah, I like it. And then uh, the other thing going on is during the whole time, the 23rd to the 28th, in the backdrop, Lord Jupiter, also sitting there in your second house of earnings where Venus and Jupiter are joining together because he's moving in a more slow way, he's engaging a longer arc of love or connection, right? Or uh, I would love her connection. I would call it um, flowing relationship, sextiling relationship to Neptune. So you're going to see like the 23rd to the 28th, Jupiter lingering in the very tail end, not 29 degrees of your Taurus second house, flowing over to dreamy Neptune. This is alchemical magic. This is pure magic, but use it as as something you have to say that's spiritually true, something that you have to, uh, something to do with your money that's a dream come true, something to do with a uh, cessation of things that you ingest that are bad for you, substances in particular that are addictive or you have a dependency on, and a spe special kind of grace befalling you as that particular problem falls away, okay? And um, then we move on and we look at May the 25th, and that's where Venus will trine Pluto. She's moved into the sign of Gemini, which is your third house of trips and travel and short distances, that is, short distance travel. Things may be to do with your neighbors, neighborhoods, siblings, aunts, uncles, cousins, etc., or online world, especially writing, but websites and blogs. That area of your life. It's got a Venusian taste now. I mean, Venus is in Gemini for three weeks. She gets there on the 23rd. Now it's the 25th. And she hooks up with Pluto in a flowing relationship to your 11th house. This can be really good luck about something to do with a favor from a friend, a trip with a friend, a trip with an elder sibling, an opportunity to learn from a friend, to get your dream course and sign up for it and get a special dispensation from someone who gets you in despite the fact you don't qualify. Um, you may have some kind of glow up around a neighbor or a neighborhood and a social event, but it's going to give you a transformative power of some kind. It's going to reveal something that's hidden, but that allows you to thrive. So it's kind of, it, Pluto can be a powerful, wealthy ally or friend, gives you an opportunity, ops is up there with Pluto, and it flows over to third house things, your social media, your website, your writing projects, your social, your local neighborhood and neighbors and stuff like that. Uh, it's interesting because on May 30th, Jupiter does the same thing. He's now in Gemini and he flows backwards to Pluto, following up on what Venus started, making it kind of like May 25th to the 30th, a doubly good week for you. And it's about authentic power. But because Pluto and Jupiter in contact because Jupiter and Venus in contact with Pluto is about wealth both times, abundance, wealth, expansion, prosperity, and growth, and goodness and luck. It is all good. <laughs> um, but it has a deep transformation in your life because Pluto here is about that deeper urge to evolutionary force of divine will to transform something. All righty. And... During this time, for example, I'll be in Portugal on the El Camino, you know, May 25th to May 30th, that's happening. And I'll be with a group of people, that's Pluto and the 11th house 
third house traveling like a caravan. So it really makes sense for you. There's some powerful transformational energies happening. And for some of you, it could just be a very powerful new connection or old connection reformed with a sibling, younger or older, or with a sister, a female, like, like a sister. Even if you're a man, it's like the energy of a female friendship here uh, that empowers you in a very profound way. And last but never least is Mercury conjuncting Uranus at the end of the month. Wow. Well, that's an interesting story because now Mercury and Uranus are together hanging out alone in your money house. And this is good financial news. So simple. Good financial news. Breakthroughs in your money. Breakthroughs in information and stories and news about money. Sudden, unexpected news stories going through your life about your earnings, resources, savings, and money, but it is positive, all right? Uh, it's positive because it is being blessed by or graced by a connection to Saturn and Neptune in the 12th that flows back at it. It's also unexpected positive developments around leases, property, pets, and rental situations. This is around May the 30th. Thanks for listening, Aries, the sign most le le least likely to actually listen to this video. Um, if you want to get on my Patreon community where you get this early access ad free, they're receiving this on April the 16th, Tuesday. Day, you get this on Sunday. They receive it ad ad free and early access, plus three up to three meetings with me by Zoom a month. If that interests you, check it out. I'm only five bucks a month for the cheapest tier, and the cheapest tier. If you come in as a brand new got person, I'm giving you two free classes as a bribe. Forty four dollars resale value. You get. Chiron, the key to purpose, and are you my person sinister relationship courses, the replays for free and the supporting documents that go with those classes. So if that's something that interests you, you could try me out on Patreon. You don't like what you see, you can leave. So come join me and the 300 odd people who hang out with me there in my private teaching and learning community, patreon.com. It's in the description box below or Google Patreon, you know, dot com slash lunatic astrology. Thank you guys. Take care. It's been a, a blast. <laughs> Bye.